This is not a video about how to exactly recreate the sound of Ringo Starr, but more about how to get a bit of that vibe into our recordings and mixes. Also, when I'm talking about the Ringo sound, I'm specifically referring to the period between 1966 and uh, 1969, when the drums were sounding a bit more explosive and exciting. And a lot of it came from the source, of course, you know, the way he was playing or how the drums were tuned and so forth. But there are a few things that we can do today to get close to that vibe by using certain plugins or techniques. So here are four pointers, four things that you can do to get closer to that vibe in your recordings and mixes. Number one, there were often tea towels used on the snare and the toms, and this was a way to deaden the sound and remove any ringing from the skins. Secondly, most Beatle tracks had mono drums, and the role of the overhead was very different from many modern recordings. Like today, most people record drums in stereo and with the overheads so far away from the drums, mainly picking up the cymbals and the room. But in Beatles recordings, the overhead was usually in the middle, pointing at the snare and closer to the drum kit. So you would pick up a bit of the cymbals, a bit of the tom, a bit of the snare, and you would get a really balanced and fat sound in the overheads of the whole kit. And uh, another interesting fact is that the overhead was usually a dynamic mic, while the under snare was a condenser mic, which is almost the opposite to how we do today. And finally, let's talk about what we can do in the mixing stage to get more of that Ringo vibe. And we are lucky to live in an era where lots of the same gear used around this time now exists in plugin emulations. And of course, without a doubt, when talking about the Ringo sound, we must include the Fairchild 660, which was the main compressor used around this time. And please note that the Fairchild uh, 670 is a very different beast, and it won't give you that same aggressive, exciting sound that we're looking for. Love. To get a Ringo type of sound from a Fairchild, we need to focus on the time constant settings, which come in the form of six different presets. What everyone may not know is that these six settings actually control both attack and release time, and setting five and six are program dependent settings, so they're better for mix bus and that kind of stuff. So we're actually just left with four settings. Position number one has a fast attack time and a fast release time. Position number two has a fast attack time, the same one as position one, but a slower release time. Position number three has a slow attack and a slow release. So it's better for bass guitar and that kind of stuff. Position four has a super slow attack and release time. This also means that setting one and two are the only two usable settings for drums, in my opinion. What setting was then used for the Ringo drum sound? If I were to guess, I would say that both were used for some of the songs. For example, Tomorrow Never Knows. To me, it sounds like there's a fast attack and fast release on the drums. For other songs, such as Rain or Revolution, it sounds to me as if there's a slower release, and that's how you get that swooshy, almost backwards cymbal sound that Ringo was famous for. And what happens here is that the attack time is so fast that it grabs the first initial hit of the cymbal, almost cutting it away. And because of the slower release time, the cymbal comes back super slowly, giving you that backward feel. So yeah, that's definitely setting two. And the cool thing with using a Fairchild emulation is that your drums, when used in this way, almost instantly get some of that vibe, that pumping, exciting, kind of aggressive sound. And here's an example of a drum kit I recorded myself, together with my brother Frederick and a good friend David Muir, back in 2011, when we spent a day at Abbey Road. Of course, you could get a similar sound anywhere, but we happen to be there. And it also helps that my brother is an amazing drummer and somebody who has that ring of feel anyway. If you want to have a listen to the full track, there's a link below in the description and you will hear a lot of beatlesque sounds in that track. Hey. 